This video is on delivering content in online classes. This video will be particularly short as I'm going to show you your options for delivering content as I see them. As I learn more, I will either add it to this video or I will link to additional resources below. So the first option for delivering content includes text, which can be textbooks, can be ebooks and e-journals available through the Snowden Library databases, Project Gutenberg is a large database of open access resources, mostly texts that are out of copyright. Project Gutenberg can be particularly useful for literature before the 1920s. There are many useful free websites that can have some good content for courses. There are a number of open educational resources repositories, such as Merlot. Emily Moran has created another online guide for how to find open educational resources. And additionally, you can create your own texts. Another option is live lectures. You can record the lectures that you give in class and stream them to students who are not able to attend class in person on that particular day. Among other tools, you can do this with Microsoft Teams, Zoom, or WebEx. Additionally, you can record your lectures. I have been using Screencast-O-Matic, which has different levels of subscription. There is a free version, but the lowest level of subscription offers a lot of resources, and it's very inexpensive. Zoom and Teams will allow you to record classes and then make them available to students later. IT has equipped classrooms with classroom recording technology. Audacity is a free tool that's easy to download and easy to use to create podcasts if no visuals are needed for your lectures. And YouTube is a really useful tool for hosting those videos because it means that students don't have to download large video or audio files. Instead, those files are streamed and there's no special software to get YouTube to work on students' computers. There are other streaming video and audio resources there is a ton of great educational material available on YouTube. There are audiobooks, and many audiobook sources are subscriptions, such as Audible. However, some of the older resources, just like Project Gutenberg has for text, you can find audiobooks available for free. For example, I found Polidori's The Vampire available for free and would offer that to my students as a different way to experience the text, particularly a text they may struggle to read in print. There are many, many podcasts available for various topics, and many of those are available for free, and they can be found through Google. And then don't forget that Snowden Library offers a number of streaming services. We have Films on Demand, we have Avon, and we have Canopy. And there are a lot of resources for arts and documentary resources in those entirely available for free. And of course, there are other subscription streaming video and audio services such as Netflix and Amazon. And it could be that you require your students to individually buy access to a movie. YouTube and Amazon will allow students to rent movies generally for under $4. But you may have some students who do not have credit cards. And if they don't have a credit card, they can't even sign up for the free trial. Additionally, these streaming video services may not be available in other countries. So if you have international students who cannot be in the United States, they may not have access to those resources. And if you do require them to buy access to particular movies, take that into consideration as you are counting up the costs that students have to pay in order to take your course. Generally, those are the ways that I see you to be able to deliver the content of your course. All of those modes of delivering content are passive for students in the online environment, with the exception of live lectures where they could participate through chat and polls. Passive consumption of educational resources may allow students to feel like they're off the hook for absorbing the content. So it's a good idea to design the content delivery in conjunction with some kind of activity. So for example, you can embed your lecture or video into either a Google form and ask them some questions about the things that you particularly want them to know out of that video. Or you can embed that in Moodle's lesson feature, or you can have them do some kind of reflection activity. 
This will keep students accountable for the materials that you ask them to do. For more ideas on interactivity, see that video that I've created. And then when you know all your options for delivering content and for holding students accountable, you can line up the content and the activity to best meet your learning goals for the class. So this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching.